Before we move on to looking at analysis of variance, I thought I'd just take a breath and go back and give you an overview of what we've looked at so far and where we're heading because it can start to look like we're doing the same thing over and over again but it's slightly different each time and that, that's correct. And the reason is we're building up from a very simple test to something quite complex and it's a good idea to do this in stages. So I've, it's a little bit like learning to drive a vehicle in that you don't actually have to understand everything about how the engine works in order to learn how to drive but you do need to know how to find your keys and you do need to you know fill it up with petrol and check the oil occasionally and that's kind of what we're doing with, st with the statistical tests at the moment we're learning how to drive all these tests but we're not really looking inside the engine and that's because inside the engine is is highly mathematical and probably beyond the scope of this course so what we started off first with was the, the little mini test, the simple one sample t-test for one mean and this is probably like learning to ride a scooter. We're just testing to see if the mean of a continuous variable is equal to a specific value. So we had a look at the hand grip data and we were looking to see if the mean hand grip strength for the people in this sample was the same as the mean hand grip strength that we had from another study. Um, for each test that we do we have a few assumptions and we usually have a, a look at these sometimes we can look at them before as we get onto more complicated models we actually can't look at them until after we've already done the test um, we are assuming that all the samples are independent of each other that is there's no relationship between the different data points so if you have a whole lot of people from one family then their data may be similar in some ways that you're not looking at in your test and so that's going to make the test invalid so we're assuming that our samples are independent and usually we're assuming that our population is approximately normal and uh, this, if you have a, a relatively large sample over 30 this assumption is usually fine. So that's a simple one sample um, t-test and often when I'm doing the tutorial videos it's I forget how to do these tests because I've already moved on from riding a scooter and I don't have to go back and do it very often. The next one up might be equivalent to a two-seater car. So instead of testing one mean, we've got two means and we want to know if they're equal to each other. The response is still continuous and we're looking at the difference between two groups. These groups might be paired in that you've got two observations on, on each person or they might be independent where you've got completely separate groups of people. The assumptions for the test are similar, that the samples are independent of each other, the sample is large or the population is approximately normal. And we also expect that the variance is similar in both the groups. And there is a, we can do tests for normality and we can do tests for variance, but at the moment it's okay if you're just looking at the, the histograms and the box plots and just having a look at what's going on with your data. So that was last week with our, our one sample and our two sample t-tests. Uh, what we're doing this week is called analysis of variance. Now it's looking at a very similar thing but the mathematics behind it is a little bit different and it's no longer called a t-test it's called an f-test and this has to do with how we construct um, the test it's about what's going on in the engine of the car so we're looking at a slightly bigger car now not a two-seater we can fit three four five in fact you can squish quite a lot of people in here so we're looking to see h naught is the mean for a is the same as group b is the same for the mean for group c is the same for mean for group d um, so we're still testing one continuous variable but we instead of just looking at two groups we can look at several groups altogether. And we have the same assumptions that the samples are independent, that our sample is large and the population is approximately normal and that the variance is similar in the two groups. And this is quite common to see um, an f-test in a published paper. Occasionally you will see a very simple two sample t-test um, probably more commonly you'll see an f-test and there's a lot of var variations on this analysis of variance um, and you can probably think about this is that there are a lot of models of family car there's a sedan there's a station wagon there's a hatchback there's lots of different types if you can get the gist of what's going on overall they all work approximately the same way now where we're heading after analysis of variance is to what we might call a the sort of overarching family of models of what's going on with all of these and that would be the general linear model. The response is still continuous so we might still be looking at something like height, weight or hand grip strength for example with this one but this is the, the 
big mother of all models where you can test lots of things all together. And we're trying to make a, a complicated picture to explain the response. We can have lots of H noughts. There can be many hypotheses all together. We can also test the relationship of our response variable with another continuous response variable. So we would be including the regression inside the model along with the um, analysis of variance or the tests of means in here. Our assumptions, it actually becomes quite difficult to test if we have things like equal variance and normality in the separate groups because all of a sudden we've got so many variables inside the model that we can't look at it all beforehand and instead of looking at everything before we have a look at all the bits that are left over after we've built the model and these are the residuals and we start checking them instead. So we start looking to check that the residuals are independent of each other, the residuals are normal and the residuals have equal variance. And then this might be a bit like driving a, a semi-trailer or a flatbed or something. And once you learn how to use one of these big models, they're they're really quite efficient, they're quite effective and you can do a lot of stuff all at once as long as you have the data to support it. Um, and so this would probably become your default landing place for, for building a, this type of model and you wouldn't need to then go back and do the, the single analysis of variance or do a t-test as well. So occasionally what happens is with a student project is they've seen that we've done all these tests and they go through and do each of these tests on their data. But that's not how it works. You just need to choose the right test or the right model for your data. Now if you've learned how to drive a scooter and a two-seater and a family car and now you're driving a semi and the semi is what you need, you don't need to go back and drive those other ones. You can just stick with this one and put everything into here. But this is complicated and it is easier to learn how to drive on something a little bit smaller first before we get up to the bigger vehicle. So we're going to have a look at analysis of variance this week. Um, and then later, I think we'll do regression next week and then we'll look at putting it all together into the, the one model. For your projects, I don't expect you to use every single test. You need to be familiar with them because they do get used, all of these get used all over the place in different papers. So you need to be able to recognise them when you see them. But you only need to use the appropriate test for your data. It's, it's not appropriate to use every single test on every single data set. And this is where I can help you and you can bring your project data in to show me and just check you're on the right path. So this week, um, analysis of variance and then later we'll get up to regression and the general linear model.